Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast, Secrets of the Saddle, All Things Cycling podcast with your host, Sylvie Dow. Now, before we get started, I have a couple freebies for you. And before you go, um, before you go check them out, go and follow me on Instagram for more cycling tips. Okay, so that's Sylvie Dow underscore cyclist. Um, and I'll see you there. So my free downloads, there are three of them. The first one is my nine favorite hill climbing skills downloads. So there's nine in there. Go try them out. Next time you do hill repeats, do them with purpose. And that is what's going to give you the performance improvement. If you go out and you have something very specific to work on. The next thing is my gear bin checklist. Now, if you're one of those people who kind of is like all over the place, maybe you show up late because you can't find this, you can't find that. Get this list check out the bike bin or bike bag that I use. Um, a lot of my club members have purchased it just to get organized. And what we do is we just keep it in our car with all of our stuff in it. So literally all I have to do is take that with me, put it in my trunk, my shoes, my helmet, my gloves, my food, my, uh, you know, my chamois butter, my sunscreen, everything's in there. So I never have to go looking for anything. And the last thing is, is my bike maintenance uh, recording. So it's an hour, but this hour is going to give you so much information about how to use the tools that you need to be carrying with you on a daily when you're going out riding, how to use them, how to take your back wheel off, how to change a tire, how to patch a tube, how to uh, repair a broken chain, um, and all sorts of other things in between. So go to askcoachsylvie.com to download all your free um, uh, documents and that recording. And I'd love to know your feedback on them. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram for more amazing tips. Take care and enjoy the episode. Thank you everyone for coming out for another amazing episodes of Secrets from the Saddle, All Things Cycling with your host, Sylvie Dow and uh, from beautiful Chelsea, Quebec, Canada here. And we have an amazing young athlete from the UK. I'm super excited to bring Alex Bosley to the podcast because not only is he the youngest male or youngest interviewee guest that I've had, he's also on, um, he's from the UK, so he's on a trajectory to gain some great goals of making the world tour. Now, the thing is that he is the son of David Bosley, who I interviewed not too long ago on episode 98. So make sure you go back there. Alex made a cameo. I'm sitting there with my five-year-old son and thinking, yeah, you know, he's not as dynamic as I'd like him to be. He's just sitting around on the sofa. Yeah, I love sitting next to him and cuddling up on the sofa and watching some, uh, you know, some something, you know, entertaining. But but I want him to be fit and healthy. And, you know, there was this disconnect because, like, I, you know, I've got enough. Uh, I've done a bit of personal development and reading and, you know, I'm self-aware enough to, or, you know, intelligent enough to know that kids kids don't do what they what you tell them to do they they tend to do what you do <laughs> mm -hmm. um and you know it goes for a lot of things doesn't it you know if you if you try and tell people to to do something and you're doing something completely different if you don't have the strength to do yourself what you're telling others to do then um you don't really have the credibility mm. um so i was like yeah we should have him on the podcast so, but the thing is, the really cool thing about Alex is that he, not only because of his age, he's 18, there's a lot of young cyclists who are in his shoes who have great dreams of making it over to Europe to race in the pro tour. So he is not only going to share with us how he got into cycling, but also the steps that he is taking to get to his goal on the world tour. And we're so excited because I know there's a lot of, uh, like I said, a lot of younger cyclists who have those dreams and um, lucky for him, he's sitting in Europe. So he has access to all the races to get those results. But um, 
here's a little bit of a bio on Alex. So he's from the UK. He's racing on a team currently called Team on Form. And uh, so he's been competing in France already uh, to some, and he's got some good European results, which we all know that's what pro teams look for. Um, and this, like I said, his goal is to uh, race more national races in the UK, and he aims to progress into a development team for a world team tour next year. So welcome, Alex, to the podcast. Super exciting to have you here. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. I have to say, this is the second time around. I wasn't recording the first time, so we both <laughs> been chatting. All right. So I always love to ask everybody that I interview how you got into cycling. Even though you're 18, there's always a story behind it. Can you tell us how you got into cycling? Yeah, so um, it's, yeah, it's probably not the most normal way of getting into it, but um. So as a kid, I've always I've always loved cycling, like since I can remember. Um, yeah, there were there are a few things like the 2012 Olympics in London. That was um, I went to watch the track cycling there, and that's just mm -hmm. like thrilling. It's always so full on. Um, and yeah, also like my grandpa, he was always um, he always used to be out on the bike doing little like things, which just as 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 a kid you're always just like mesmerized by you're always like oh, how can you do that and um and yeah I started um my grandpa started taking me out on these like small rides around nice like countryside and everything um I mean I like I learned how to do a few tricks and things and um yeah it, it was pretty amazing like you just as a young kid you like for me I was learning so many things which like even now I'd struggle to do like some really crazy stunts which I was able to do so casually um and yeah um from that I kind of I'd always had like a a kind of passion towards cycling but it wasn't yet unlocked by then um mm. and then when I was about 13 or 14 um I was on a family holiday down south of France. Um, we decided to hire some road bikes and um, we just took them out for a day and I absolutely loved it. It was just so like, it was such a kind of tranquil and like relaxing, but also like exhilarating experience, like just being able to ride along the coast and look at the sea. That was something that really like made me I don't know just want to like get into cycling properly like get get more of that um yeah. so then when we got back into the UK um I was like yeah I want to I want to get a road bike so I got a road bike um and yeah need I just that, I need a road bike <laughs> yeah exactly we always need a road bike and then um and then yeah there's a little 10 or 11 mile loop that um we found we could do me and my dad so we went on it and it was such an achievement to complete that at first it was like wow we've we've like conquered the world now we can do this like little loop in our local village um and from that I was like yeah I want to do this more I want to do it again and again so I kept doing it and I kept getting faster and I kept getting like new pbs and things mm -hmm. and I was like yeah this is really cool this is like pretty wicked quite like this <laughs> um and then yeah so I there's someone who like suggested I could get into road racing like cycle racing and um I was like wait what's that like what <laughs> I just had no idea and um we kind of ended up turning to this race it was it was yeah it was a small like little circuit around a forest track um and yeah like going around that I just um it was so exciting you're just like you're just with other people like it was pretty carnage in a way but it was still <laughs> so fun like you just it was so yeah you got I got a lot of adrenaline from it and from that I was like 
yeah i want to i want to do this more i mm. is the only the beginning um so yeah i kind of started getting into more and more racing and um then also one thing that happened was um so in britain we've got um regions and each region is looked after by british cycling and um okay. i was fortunate enough to be selected to um Ooh. attend a regional it's called a regional school of racing so it's where is that for um being so, like a selection like a tryout um effective well sort of yeah it's so it's not like you're you're going to be selected for the um national squad is more right. just that they're developing young riders and like get, teaching them how to be safe but also improve themselves as a rider mm -hmm. um so i was lucky enough to attend quite a few of those as a youth um i was yeah so you kind of spend a day at a cycling circuit and um they teach you uh, it's quite simple things but it's things that if you if you didn't get taught you wouldn't know better to do them mm -hmm. um, yeah so from that I was I was able to pick up on quite a few um like new tricks and skills and also how to be safe which was quite important um right and yeah I've always been grateful for that is it or oh, it did lead it gave me a bit of direction on how to um how to progress a little bit as a young cyclist um right. but yeah then i got into national races um uh yeah from about 15 years old and um those were like those were amazing those are like <laughs> the, those are like the bees knees of racing um so just a get, bit different eh <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it's like the top people in my age mm -hmm in the country just all coming together to like bash about his circuit and just like go full pelt and um yeah but it's like you're just hanging on for dear life at the back of a group <laughs> you're still like so excited to be there um and it was it was really an experience that you're always going to remember like as a kid I'm always going to remember that and um yeah I kind of I got more into um racing at that level and um as well as regional level just keep plugging away at these races and um then I got selected by my cycling region to um go abroad for some racing in Europe um, yeah and I was I had no idea what to uh, I was I always <laughs> said yes I was like yes, what does so. that mean <laughs> yeah exactly I was like so so what do I do then <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was such an unknown world for me um mm -hmm. so yeah I we ended up going it was to Belgium like it, it wasn't too far away actually you could just get there in the car in about five hours right um so yeah I just traveled with a group of other people around my region um to this race and it is so different there um you'd turn up and literally the whole community where the race is is just like it's they're all out they're all like supporting the race and um it's it's so amazing the weather's mostly great in Belgium as well unless it's raining um yeah and yeah I kind of I turned up there I was like this I'm not used to this like what am I going to do here that like, you yeah I was kind of I was pretty nervous of like quite naturally um and yeah, yeah. And, like it's such an unknown world um especially like your first time racing abroad um especially and quite a young age as well mm -hmm. I think yeah I was still um 15 then I think okay I was gonna um, ask yeah so when, when your dad got all excited Woo! yeah yeah my dad was starting to like is that like, oh yeah he's not too bad then is he like you can do is that, a bit. Is that were you racing with a team at that time or did you go as an independent? Um so technically neither of those. So it's oh so with the um British cycling, they take regions out to Europe. Um okay. yes, yeah, technically 
yeah it it is a team but it's not like the national team it's just like a regional team oh okay so but you were were you were with other racers from your region but were you yeah. guys um considered a team like did you work as a team or you were you there to race individually do you know what i mean um yeah so we were technically all together as a team um okay. but realistically we had no team tactic <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah yeah we'll all just like stay in the group as long as we yeah, can yeah that's right, right. finish yeah <laughs> like survive and don't crash those were like the two objectives of the team um that's usually the first objective make it through <laughs> your race and then what do you think about that <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um so yeah i remember it was it was such an amazing experience um i was i was nervous before the start of a race like on the start line but as soon as you get going i was i was like pretty fine um but the experience like the racing they do there is so different to the UK um oh. the UK can be quite like um cagey like not everyone wants to like go at full pelt um people in the UK sometimes they prefer to be tactical um whereas in Belgium it's like yeah right <laughs> we're just gonna go full pace until we like completely burn out <laughs> so um <laughs> For like the first that is interesting hour, yeah I was just so kind of shocked at first I was like right so there's no like little warm-up or anything like we're not taking it easy then okay. <laughs> no no you have to do that before the race starts <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so I was like right okay I'm I'm definitely just hanging on for dear life right now like let's see how long this lasts um <laughs> and then yeah I was I was literally probably at the back for most of a race um and I never really, I was just kind of focusing as much as I could on that staying in and just not getting dropped. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, maybe like 90 minutes into that race, um, I noticed a group, like the main peloton is so much smaller than it was at first. I was like, where's like, it was like a third where, where of Where is everybody? Disappeared. <laughs> you didn't notice them like popping off yeah, the back? Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I noticed like a few popping off the back, but then like, <laughs> I kind of, when you just like take a chance, look around, you're like, where's everybody gone? Is there like a cafe stop or something? <laughs> like, so funny. <laughs> all right, this is, um, yeah, this is, this is cool. You're still in the race. You've got like, I think as, yeah, you're just doing laps. I think there's 10 laps. There's maybe three to go. I was like, okay, right. I can, yeah, I can stay I'm in. still hopefully. here. Um, and then, yeah, it was from that, I was just like, yeah you know what I've I've like it's my first race I'm just gonna like go balls out I'm gonna try and get to the front do something other than hanging off the back um yeah yeah I kind of I managed to get maybe into the front 10 when I was like no nah, no nah, this is too difficult let's let's <laughs> go back a little bit um so yeah it was like whoa yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like yeah I, I don't want to be here anymore like just <laughs> um yeah yeah so I was like I kind of just went back to just hanging off her back until yeah and then I, I managed to get to the end and I was like all right okay we've I know we've got like half a lap left I can just use all my matches like leave it all out there and mm -hmm. yeah I managed to I got I got an all right position I even got some like prize money I was like oh, oh this is this is quite nice like, <laughs> I, I was that do... top five or top um, 10 no it was, it was like top 20 actually but it was oh, still wow they, they're pretty generous with their prize money i guess it's so. like in the uk it's like top three is that yeah. you get a bit Same of money but, yeah <laughs> lucky if you have anything like, <laughs> I was like, wait why, why am i getting money here like what am i done but oh, like, yeah i was like yeah can't complain of that and um yeah i ended up being um so there were six people in my kind of team region who started and um myself and only one other person were surviving um yeah. <laughs> but we were the only two left in our team who finished the race right so, uh, yeah I'll take that result and then um, yeah it was it was pretty cool that I was like so that's what racing in Europe's like and like just hanging in there yeah and I'm sure your coach is like okay we'll take these two guys 
and <laughs> develop them a little bit more. And these guys need more work here. And yeah. it's a great test, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it was definitely a test. Um, and yeah, it was, it was quite rewarding to have finished it, knowing that like a lot of people had dropped out and couldn't yeah. finish it. Um, I felt, yeah, it was, it was quite empowering, really. I felt pretty good from that. Um, so then, yeah, coming back to the UK after that, I was like, right, let's let's get these racing boots on. I'm going to get more into this. <laughs> um, and yeah, gradually, I've I've been really fortunate enough to um, have had opportunities like that. Mm -hmm. um, so the the region invited me out to various races again, and um, yeah, I was quite privileged to have that opportunity because that's that's what really like racing in Europe has been my like sole passion I've absolutely yeah. adored everything out there um because the the energy you get like being out there is so nice it's um mm. it you yeah there's no way you can kind of match that um and it, it's much more of a community it's yeah so... I think you either really love it or you really like hate it yeah yeah it's... some people who don't survive out there and it's just yeah quite... When I used to um, manage my women's team, there was always a, a beginning, like a first race of the season. And that yeah. it kind of sounded like that. And we just all go there. We've trained through the winter. And then I, you know, with new racers who want to race and I'm like, OK, this is what you're going to expect at this race. And we'll talk at the end whether you really loved it and we're you know, we're empowered by it and you're like stoked to do the next one or you just really hated it and you never want to do it again. And mm -hmm. it was, and I was just like, this is the conversation we're going to have to after this race, like, yeah. because, you know, you think you've got all of the training in and it's the first race and it's the nicest course you're ever going to race on. Cause it's like a race car track yeah, and it's 5k loop and you do it like, I don't know, 11 times yeah and uh and then I'm like yeah we're gonna have this conversation afterwards and you know it's always like whoa that was a bit of an eye opener mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's like that really um yeah you do you learn a lot from having races like that where it's survival not just yeah like, conserving yeah. your pace <laughs> so, and, you just yeah. need to finish the race that's all like, that's yeah, your whole good, like, mission <laughs> Yeah, there's no real like tactics behind it. It's just like hanging in there, which is mm -hmm. a main thing to do. Yeah, or cro yeah. cross the finish line. That's it. whether <laughs> you're like dead last, because that's ultimately probably what's going to happen. <laughs> like, I'm just going to be real with you. Um, but, you know, and not to, to DNF, right? Like to yeah. pull yourself out and say, this is not for me. Like, yeah. you know, because some people do that. They're like, eh, no. Nope. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and it, it's fair enough you kind of that experience can really affect your like view on yeah. cycling and um, because it's not going to get any easier right exactly yeah it's not yeah. like they're suddenly going to ease up for you so that you can yeah. stay in the group it's like, yeah that's right you're either in so, or you're out uh, yeah so did so did the um the um so the the regional group that brought you on did they coach you and keep you moving in, like taking you to events and things like that? Did you guys have like a, then a cohesive little team that you started practicing tactics with? Is that how it? Um, yeah, not quite. Ran? Um, so the region, they, they do provide a lot of support for people kind of, yeah, from a young age up to maybe 16, 17 or 18. Right. Um, but yeah, they, they didn't exactly coach us, but they did give us, um, like opportunities for like, they dedicate days to, um, uh, develop us like tactically and with right. skills. Um, so yeah, it's not like they were, yeah. Cause some of them were just like average people who were just taking us out to, um, Belgium for a day, but, right. um, yeah, they, they're, they're really good they've done really well in um providing support um to kind of um 
almost guide you through through racing a little bit Mm -hmm. um learning you like learning how to do it safely and also like you you pick up on things that you wouldn't have on your own um right yeah you get you they give you a lot of opportunities there are a lot of things that um I'm really grateful for that especially the days where they dedicate um the like to develop you Mm -hmm. um but yeah they there there weren't any like coaches as such um that was kind of for the um the national team um right you're on that you'd obviously be taken much more Mm -hmm. uh, care of and yeah you'd be treated a lot more seriously in a way Mm -hmm. although we're still treated really well and um we got a lot of support as that region yeah so was it up was it like up to you at that point to find yourself a coach to give you the a like training plans because it sounds like they did a lot of focus on skills which is definitely what you need if you want to move forward I mean it's great to be fast and everything but if you're tactically really dangerous you're not yeah. gonna go very far yeah exactly yeah so I think maybe when I was 16 I got my first coach um right. it was just like a I paid like quite maybe 30 quid a month which isn't that mm-hmm. much really um and he was just online he would give me on training peaks or I don't even think it was training peaks back then it was something like quite basic I just every month he'd give me a plan um right. and yeah that was like that was when I first got a sense of um like what I needed to do to develop because right. before that it was just doing my own thing like doing what I thought <laughs> I wanted yeah hard all the time. <laughs> yeah um I mean it's that's not a bad thing I guess like it obviously uh, you're still able to enjoy it and yeah but I did kind of everyone else by that point who's serious about cycling had a coach um mm. so I was like yeah I need to jump on that bandwagon I need to like get some get someone to lead me um because my dad he was doing a great job he he knew what to do but at the same time like you can your dad can do uh you, your dad can only do so much until like you need someone else to do it um because yeah. at the same time you you can't like it's not always healthy to have that kind of relationship where your dad always has to tell you what to do um because sometimes you're not going to agree with it and like mm-hmm. um so yeah it's yeah I was when I got that coach um is that like, okay like now I know what to do um mm-hmm. and yeah it was it was stepping stones really um yeah because yeah since then I've kind of moved to and from coaches um when it's been right and yeah it's it really does give you the right sense of direction um because mm-hmm. they they know what's best for you they they know your plans and um yeah. it's really important for them to get it right for you so you mm-hmm. can obviously progress at the rate you should be um yeah because if you're doing everything on your own then yeah you can you can do so well but it's you don't know as much as coach knows simply and um it's that kind of third person view which is really important because you may not notice that you're fatiguing so much so you're just trying to push harder but you're not improving and then you get (laughs) that's hence the all out all the time yeah so speaking of stepping stones Alex when you were we're going to talk about an incident that kind of put you back a little bit and that was when um you had this huge crash that um that I read about in an article and we talked about talking about this because there's always that instance where something is going to cause you to step back and take another look or restart or um because you mentioned like poor planning um and then and then how this crash made you just sort of sit back and plan more 
How did yeah. that feel like, or what happened? Cause you, you have, I don't know. Alex was going to show us some pictures. I don't know how graphic they are, no. but um, so you could always go to the YouTube uh, video on this episode and check those out. But crashes happen. They can either be, you know, you can come back from them quite quickly or they can both put you out for a long time. What happened with you if that happened? Um, yeah, so it was... So the final race of the final national race of the season, um, it was yeah early September. Um, I had just got back from France. I'd done like a perfect amount of training. It was like the first time I'd really um, prepared myself for an event like this. Um, and the aim was to um, get um, a really like strong position, kind of finish in the top ten or kind of get a podium um but then yeah so I was in the race um and it was quite exciting I was able to actually stay in it um quite comfortably which hadn't been like the case before before and I'd be like just hanging on the back just for like dear life as normal but like I just I felt different in this I felt really capable um mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it got to the kind of final um, lap, uh, half lap or one lap. Um, oh. And it was all re like really heating up. Um, <laughs> I'd like, I'd done my best to save all my energy. I was feeling good. So then I was like starting to move up into the kind of top 20 riders. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, the kind, the way the course um, happened to like, go um we went down this pretty sharp hill and Ooh. and at the bottom of a hill we had a little ramp up and um <laughs> at the bottom of a hill this the rider in front of me just literally cut across me and um I had no idea what to do so I just like, obviously I just decked it and um yeah it kind of it caused quite a big pile up behind me um Ooh. I think there must have been like 20 30 riders um <gasps> like just piling up um oh and it was God. yeah that's kind of it's quite hard to remember it almost it is mm -hmm. like, yeah like everyone would say it's like quite a blur on what happened um then I just remember like myself oh my dying, like just trying to open my eyes and I'm just like on my tarmac I'm just like um I, I don't think I finished the race and like <laughs> Like yeah, what what do I do now? Um, <laughs> yeah, it was quite it was quite weird because it had never happened. Um, right. Not that extent for sure. Um, and then like, I just I couldn't really move. I was just like yeah, let, let's just lie down here. It's it's a good <laughs> place to relax, I guess. Um, so then yeah, I didn't I yeah I didn't really know what to do. Um, and then yeah, kind of you got like ambulances just rushing to kind of attend as I remember there were like quite a few people on the floor um so I was like maybe we we're just all sunbathing but yeah it was I remember like there's quite a lot of pain um so yeah I was like okay it's maybe a bit serious um so then yeah I kind of I got attended to by like medics and um the ambulance and everything um and yeah I couldn't I had like some back pain, um, oh. which uh, obviously the medics were quite worried about. Um, right. Yeah, I, I couldn't really feel like I could move, move my back or anything. Um, so I just, they, yeah, they got me on a like spinal board. Mm -hmm. um, and literally, yeah. yeah, I remember apparently everything I had like my bike was written off my helmet was uh, absolutely trashed I try and I need to get those photos but um yeah and then yeah literally everything I'd borrowed a pair of um envy wheels which was so nice um, and they were they were like literally I think it was snapped, I think. yeah <laughs> so I was like yeah did somebody really fall on you did you have somebody fall on you or just like um, was like a pile up remember. behind you I think, yeah, there must have been people who wow. kind of fell on me on my bike. Um, 
because my bike was like it was cracked in a couple of places and the wheel was like snapped so yeah that that wouldn't usually happen if it was on your own but yeah it was I don't really remember like what happened in the crash I just remember after not being able to do much um Mm -hmm. and yeah it was quite a horrible experience I literally had my grandparents there as well so it wasn't really nice of them oh like um yeah they didn't see uh, that part they were waiting for you at the finish line and like a couple people finished and like nobody else yeah I think (laughs) yeah so like going into the last lap for riders there's quite a lot of riders maybe like 100 and then like oh. on the, as everyone crossed the line um it was like maybe half that and then you just see like a load of people like behind the group just trying to either like walking across the line or just like crawling <laughs> or something I don't know it was oh like, no oh my gosh and then like yeah wow. there's, just, there's a lot of ambulances like on the back part of the course and because it was quite enclosed so you couldn't actually see the crash from the um, finish line yeah um, thank but obviously yeah it was quite evident that something had happened um so and yeah it was I was just spending quite a long time in the hospital from then um oh. I managed to get discharged kind of late night like I think 11 or half 11 um but yeah it is pretty rough because I was yeah I was just quite out of it um I didn't really know what was going on a lot of the time I knew Mm -hmm. I was in hospital and getting checks but I yeah I was just pretty dazed um yeah so yeah then I kind of got discharged and thankfully nothing was broken like on me um it was just that usual kind of road rash and um bruises I'm sure yeah bruises and like sore muscles Uh, (laughs) yeah it's nothing long lasting which was which I've kind of been really thankful for because that has been my worst experience but um yeah I've got I'll try and share my screen here Um, oh I don't I think the second I can probably give you hosting rights uh, uh, all right so you can share um so how did you feel about that because that must have been devastating um and was that kind of the end of your season or this uh, was one of the last races you said yeah so it was early so September. Went into the, the fall yes kind of. um it was it was a bit of a shocker um yeah, it was it was effectively the last um important race of the year. <laughs> um so it was quite a sour way to end it. Um but yeah, after that, um I was just obviously focused on recovering and um seeing what I could do from here. Um because mm-hmm. the result I was kind of planning to get was um something that would have hopefully hopefully landed me in the top ten. Um UK rankings um Mm. but yeah obviously when you've when you've crashed out it's going to be um you're not going to get any result are you so um yeah I was it was strange because um I'm just trying to I'll share the screen here uh yeah so um from that I was just recovering um obviously I had a bit of time off the bike um but then yeah it was I didn't I didn't really know what to do because I've never had a crash like that um so yeah how long did it take you to get back on your bike after Um, like just mentally as well as I was a bit too eager um oh <laughs> I can't remember. You're so remember. young, that's why. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't yeah, want to I get on my bike right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it's literally three days. Um oh. and then yeah, so I was like, yeah, this is okay. Like I'm back after three days, but then it almost backfires because you're like, yeah, I'm not actually really like, I'm not meant to be on the bike, like I'm meant to be resting. Um yeah. it, yeah, you can't always um recover that quickly um 
so yeah from that I was yeah I was kind of declining in my training progression which was mm. a bit annoying I was like I'm back on my bike why aren't I like progressing anymore um <laughs> so then I realized yeah this was like another learning curve for me it was like mm. yeah okay you crashed your body's in like recovery mode you just need to like ease it off and take more time off yeah um that was yeah that was something that I learned from a crash um and yeah it's it's always quite a hard lesson to learn um especially when you're so desperate to get back on the bike but mm -hmm. your body's telling you otherwise um so it also like learned me to like how to respond to what my body thinks mm -hmm. um uh, listen to your body more really um so yeah that was is pretty rough because like you're still kind of bruised up from a crash and you're still mm -hmm. trying to train but you just know that it's not going to work after a while um so yeah that was that was the worst crash I've had um, yeah probably knock on wood luck yeah exactly touch wood that's um as yep. not going to be any, everybody touch wood uh, yeah <laughs> so, now this is kind of cool because we're we're going to move on from this, but it's important that I, I like that you said that you learned from this and were you able to fill that time with something else? Because some people just live to ride, ride to live. Um, and, um, and this is a time where you can't do that. Were you yeah. able to accept and just, and fill it up with something else that helped you along in your uh, recovery yeah so kind of when I realized I need more time off at first it's like what else are you going to do um mm. it's like yeah uh, it's either cycling or not cycling but <laughs> uh -huh. like, well yeah now I've, I've got to take time off so um it, it was yeah it's not always the end of the world like it, it is quite nice um you like this is what I want to hear yeah it's not so bad, right? <laughs> um but it's not always bad to take time off the bike it is important sometimes mm -hmm. to have that kind of um reset um so yeah I, I don't even remember what I did kind of after that crash when I knew I needed time off um but usually yeah like especially nowadays if I've got if I need to take time off a bike I'll spend it like being with friends or just socializing a lot mm. more is that's another thing with cycling it's not always um compared to team sports it's not always that sociable because yeah. a lot of the time you can be training on your own and it's quite isolating mm -hmm. um so yeah it's enough is something that I've learned along the way that it's important to um kind of always have a bit of time to be with friends um mm. and yeah especially like, at your age yeah right yeah, when, when you're like 16 you don't want to <laughs> like, who do you <laughs> like where's my friends yeah exactly like, you don't want to be switched off from your friends because it's, yeah. it's really important to have them with you um and yeah I think at one point I may have got a bit carried away with cycling so I was like spending less time with friends but then yeah now I've learned that you've got to keep you've got to keep balance really and um yeah that's great it's yeah. great that you're you're thinking that way this young because yeah. now let's just talk about and um about your future and where you are right now as per you know the next year or two because you want to make the world team tour what are you doing right now to get you closer to that goal yeah so um it's it's been quite an experience really um so right now I've literally just finished my um I don't know I think we've got different school systems over here but I've done a levels which is um up until you're 18 you're just um learning so I finished that last week which um it's been quite a relief so now I've been able to <laughs> oh and off school yeah, done. Exactly. is that but, is kind of is that kind of like the equivalent of your last year of high school or is it college like um yeah so how does it work 
I think is high school when you finish at 18. Yeah, that... like grade 11. Yeah, yeah, I think well. it's that. Um, so yeah, I've effectively finished. Finished high, high graduated school. high school. Yeah. Um, okay. And it, it went quite well, hopefully. I'm going to be waiting for results, I think, in a couple of months or so. Nice. Um, yeah. That, That's important this, too. Schooling is yeah. important. Yeah, it's another thing you've got to kind of keep up with. You can't, even though like my aim is to be a professional cyclist, it's still important to have kind of um, the education. You can't always like drop out. Um, and you've always, yeah. Although, I'm sure your dad has been like, <laughs> yeah. that's, you know, it's good to be racing your bike, but keep what... How, yeah you have to have something to fall back on yeah exactly and um yeah so although yeah it is quite stressful trying to balance the two sometimes mm -hmm. um especially in the last like three months where covid made it a lot more um uh intense and it would have oh. normally been um but yeah i've i've since i finished that i've um been able to relax so much more and um mm. Uh, I even had a week off the bike a couple of weeks ago just so I could um like reset and like you're kind of changing changing what you're going to be doing um like seasons yeah so um now we're kind of heading into summer um yeah I'm able to change up my training obviously put more hours into it um mm -hmm. on and off the bike um so whether it's stretching or obviously riding a bit more and yeah um yeah so it's it's quite interesting right now um because i've got um french nationality so ideally i would be able to go over to france um mm -hmm. to do some racing but obviously it's quite unknown like you can't you can't assume that you're going to be able to head over there um with all of these restrictions right. um so i'm um, I'm yeah I'm sort of um I'm looking at options with regards you're gonna to have to move to Belgium exactly <laughs> yeah I wouldn't mind that, you know? <laughs> yeah it's, it's not it's not the worst idea um yeah grab some teammates let's go get a yeah. flat and <laughs> yeah. just race yeah exactly that's that wouldn't be too bad but um <laughs> yeah so my main focus this year is um getting the results because last year it was it was really difficult um yeah. after effectively the whole uk calendar got um trashed away in the bin yeah uh, there's there's no real opportunity to do any good races in the uk and um mm -hmm. i i was fortunate fortunate enough to go out to france for a few weeks and um get some racing in there but right. um it's, it was also quite similar like I was I was trying to do a little a too little too late really um uh -huh. so I I got some kind of okay results from that but I wasn't really able to show myself in races like I would usually and um that's what I'm trying to recover from this year um mm. just nailing those those races um getting the good results because that's what yeah. teams are really looking for um yeah. so yeah while I've got um I've got good enough power numbers or something I'm kind of always working on mm -hmm. um the the aim is to get the results um mm -hmm. it's with results comes opportunities in teams and um Definitely. yeah so I've I've been talking to a few um development teams for world tour oh, okay. um so there's been it's been quite um valuable to have their time and um right. yeah i'm hoping there's going to be some opportunities in that um from the for the end of the year um mm -hmm. whether it's getting an opportunity to race with them or hopefully i should be getting a um a plan is to get a contract for the end of the season um but yeah it's all it's all a lot more difficult than it would usually be with um all of the so, rules in place yeah so do you have to apply to these development teams because i've i've chatted with a lot of girls who are canadian um 
looking to get onto pro teams in the United States. And a lot of it, obviously, like you said, it's the results, like just getting to as many races as you can, getting the results together, putting your resume together and then sending it off. Is that kind of what you're doing? Yeah, that's what I've been doing with most of the teams. Um, Right. Obviously, if you if you catch a ride, then they may contact you first. Um, right. That does happen, but um, it's always effectively safer to express your interest in them first, because mm-hmm. um, that that really that lets them look out for you more in races. Right. Um, so yeah, for example, I've got one team who have been uh, overlooking my training peaks data for the last three or four months. Okay. Um, and yeah it's um yeah that by kind of expressing your interest you you can almost find out what they want from you um which really helps to um do what you need to do effectively um, right so yeah it's it's all quite um it's difficult really um that's the truth it's it's never easy getting a um team place i know always, I, i've always, heard yeah you just um, have to keep racing right like exactly and looking and prospecting as a racer yeah. i had no idea that is like the kind of like the the process yeah you know yeah wow. it's, yeah it's, it's not easy as uh no as well the- you're young enough alex and you've got I don't know. Do you have time? Do you have time on your side? Because yeah, I know is there like a window? Because um, yeah, so I'm yeah, I'm 18 now. Um, I've got yeah, I've got probably more time than quite a few people, which is quite lucky. Um, yeah, because I'm a first year under 23 rider now. Um, which means right. I'm yeah, under 23 is uh, what four or five years of. Uh, mm-hmm for development yeah um and through that that's the kind of main window of opportunity to um get a get a team position on a uh, world tour development team um because right. that's yeah that's a main stepping stone to take um from what i've been like looking into and experiencing that's a main right. stepping stone to world tour level um yeah if you if you can get onto a development team for a pro tour team um that's that's arguably um the safest and best route but um yeah obviously it's it's not always possible for people and there are other options which may yeah there's always another option really (laughs) you'd always there's always another way now your current team before we wrap up your current team, team on form. Now you're racing with them. So is that part of the stepping stone? Like, because you still need to race with a t- within a team and learn how to race as a team, as yeah. part of a team, whether you like you're, you know, you're domestic at the back or you're the, or you're the sprinter or you're the hill climber. Is that what you're currently folk like working on right now within that team is to, really build those team dynamics yeah so um yeah team on form is they're they're really good supporting team they Mm -hmm. do whatever they can to help you get into the good races um but is it just you or is there like a team of of 18 year olds like is there a group of um, you there's yeah there's a small group of us um okay there's i think six riders about oh that's good yeah so but yeah we don't always have the same like race goals or the same interests in the oh, season I see. Okay. um yeah while we like for example there's some really good uk races we've got an opportunity with but not all of the riders can make it or it's not their their desired route um right okay I so, get yeah. it. so they kind of support you as an individual racer on their team but yeah. you guys don't travel and train as a team no not really okay. so um yeah we Got may it. if as if there's a couple of us locally we may like go for a ride together and get a bit of team bonding but um yes yeah, it's, it's not 
as of now it's not like the um it's not a very like close relationship team but right, it, I get it's, it. it's okay. a great stepping stone um mm -hmm. and yeah there's a lot of support within the team where possible mm -hmm. we kind of do our best to support each other yeah with, um yeah I haven't really had so much and um yeah something I've really valued for, like I've been grateful to be part of that team because yeah for sure yeah yeah it's really nice having that kind of community feel it, yeah for sure it's it's never really fun being a solo independent yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. traveling by yourself and yeah. trying to get the deals and stuff like that so it's great that you have um you have that to support so we're going to bring it to an end. This has been amazing. Now, Alex, do you have any last minute words of advice for someone like yourself who is back at 16 years old with the dream of coming over to Europe? Well, you're already in Europe. You got the one step ahead, but, you know, getting to like a higher level. Like, seems like you are on track, like you have your plan and no doubt that with the help of your dad and your team that you will get there and you're racing. But what would you say to somebody else, some, like somebody who's just, who is at that age? Um, yeah, I think the main thing is to make sure you're always enjoying it, like I did, um, there's been people I know who've kind of fell out of love with cycling because mm -hmm. they get too caught up with the numbers or the data or there's too much wow. pressure. Um, right. Yeah, making sure you don't you don't give yourself too much pressure to progress too quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Cycling is something that you'll always, as long as you enjoy it, there's always going to be progression there. And um, yeah, just make sure um try and try and find people to ride with as well um find like a group or like you don't always have to be on your own um even though that may sometimes be the best way to train um there's yeah it's, it's important to um not make it such an isolating sport um it's important to find a kind of community you can be in as part of cycling um yeah and yeah, I just, I just wouldn't stress too much on making sure you hit some certain numbers or you get into a certain team. Um, it's, it's all really natural. You can't, mm -hmm. you can only force so much until it, um, it doesn't help. And um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of, a lot of what I've learned is to kind of, yeah, make sure you don't, you don't stress too much over it because as long as you're enjoying it and there's no reason to um like be upset in the sport because it's it's a privilege really to have the opportunity right. to to be cycling and to be racing it's yeah it's something you should always enjoy i love it and what i love most about what you just said is to not to stress over the numbers yeah yeah. I know how, how obsessed some people can get and coaches. Yeah. And it's one of those things that drive good athletes away, mm. in my opinion, is obsessing on the numbers. And sometimes it's just like, you know, you've, you got to continue loving what you want to do. You don't want to be doing it because, you know, you've got to get up to 300 watts for three minutes and, you know and and you're not getting there and and it's you feel bad yeah. you know but yeah. um I love that you say that yeah it's, it's something that I've learned as well um you can yeah the numbers are nice to have but mm -hmm. especially They're when you're important saying, yeah but they exactly. shouldn't be the defining factor I think exactly. like especially yeah. when you're young and you've got lots of you know um time to develop and and mm. uh you know you wouldn't want to ruin your experience now and yeah. lose the option you know lose a good athlete yeah because of it so yeah that's it really I love so thank you so much I love this interview I think it's been um really good to talk to you 
Um, and I want to thank you again, Alex, and I want to thank our listeners for jumping in. We would love to know what your biggest takeaway was. And if you know of someone that you can share this with who's in this situation, it doesn't have to be about cycling, right? It can be about any sport. Um, as a young youth who's getting into it on a more competitive level, um, you know, I think this is a, a great reference for, for a lot of youth. So thank you so much. Thanks. And please don't forget to put your notifications on so you don't miss another amazing episode of Seekers from the Saddle with amazing guests from all over the world. And give us a review, right, Alex? We deserve a review and a great rating. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks.